Hello friends. I can't even tell you how excited, whoa, that's loud, I am today that I am at home. I just did a workout for the first time after a crazy day. So CTFAR, I remembered yesterday that my oldest had an orthodontist appointment this morning and then failed to forget about it when I got up. It was at 7.30, I got him up, oh, I don't know, 7.10, and had to get him fed, dressed, out the door, and to the orthodontist by 7.30, along with my other one. So, you know, those circumstances that we have no control over, we get to choose those thoughts. But this is how mindset work really comes in handy in life. But I wanna to talk today about Passover and Easter. This is a big weekend for a lot of us who celebrate religious holidays. Um, and if you don't, you might be invited to somebody's house just for Easter lunch or something like that. And I want to give you some to be mindset ways to think, whether you're at a restaurant or whether you're in your home or going to a friend's house, or maybe you're just going out to eat this weekend. So let's talk about practical ways to take to be mindset on the road. All right, let's remember the first principle um, that this is your journey. You get to make this your journey and modify things to work for you. The other thing I like to remind folks of is that any time that you make a choice that is empowering you, you're giving somebody around you permission to live a better self. Does that make sense? So when you don't just say yes to all the, all the things, right? And you say, I'm being more mindful today. I want to have X, Y, and Z because I feel better when I have that. You give them permission to lean in and do the same. So that's exciting. All right, let's talk about you get invited by some friends to go out to brunch, or you get invited to go out to a uh, dinner this weekend, or even if you um, have Passover, maybe it's at a family friend's house, okay? Those meals are so important. They are, I was about to say the bread of life, but literally they are what makes community so strong. Sharing food with others, being around the table, having conversation, looking into someone else's eyes, smiling, and just hearing each other's life stories. That is priceless. So we should always make it less about the food and more about the people. That's goal number one. But remember our first of the two bunnies, it's always water first. So whether you're in a restaurant or in someone's home, always think about that water first concept. 16 ounces of water before you sit down for a meal, having water with your meal. Even if you're gonna have a cocktail, even if you're gonna have a glass of wine, think about that concept of water. Don't go off the rails. I know if I go to a restaurant and I order a glass of wine, sometimes they don't even bring me water. I have to ask, so don't forget to ask because alcohol can be a tricky thing that sneaks up on you. So water first, okay? When you're looking at appetizers, um, you may be going to a meal in a restaurant where it's a prefix, kind of a set menu, you might be going with family and friends where they're doing the ordering, or you might be, again, going and having um, a meal with some friends uh, to celebrate Passover. When it comes to appetizers, obviously if it's Passover, you're gonna skip the bread basket, that won't even be an issue. But if it's not, I would encourage you to think about what appetizers are on the list, on the menu, that might be veggie-based, veggies most. Bread, oftentimes, it may be the most wonderful thing if it's fresh baked and all that good stuff, but it does, for me, fill me up. It takes away the space to eat something else that would be more desirable, more nourishing, that would give you a ton of energy. So just think about that. I'm not saying deprive yourself. Certainly, if you're following Passover traditions, you want to kind of obviously bypass that. And let's talk about matzah since we're here, because matzah is a big Passover tradition. Um, matzah is is great and you're gonna have matzah with your Passover meal, but think about the, a portion of matzah being about the size of your palm, okay? Because ultimately, it's not a fiber-filled carb. Um, it is a traditional meal item in the Jewish culture, but let's not make it a matzah meal, okay? Let's make sure that we get lots of fresh vegetables, um, things that are customary with tradition, but that fit with your to-be mindset, okay? I have known friends, I went to college with a lot of friends that celebrated Passover and it was like, matzah became like their meal plan. Um, I would encourage you just to think differently. Some ideas um, for appetizers in restaurants that you might enjoy this weekend, I made some notes, um, things like minestrone soup, um, ahi tuna tartare, that's a great way that you're gonna get some protein and a little bit of vegetable, stuffed mushrooms, Brussels sprouts, we talked about Brussels sprouts in another, another video, that's something you may not make much of at home, 
Um, but think about that. That's a great way to start. I also want you to think, especially if it's Passover, this is a time, even though we are very anti-diet culture in here, Passover does have food rules. I want you to respect that, but I want you to think less about what you can't have and more about what you can enjoy. So there's a lot of options that you can enjoy. Sweet potatoes, baked apples, things like that. So you're gonna get that um, savory, but you're not gonna get into conflict with what your core beliefs are, if that makes sense. All right, let's talk about the main course. There are so many options, and if you're a restaurant, the options can be endless. I want you to think about proteins that sound appealing, but might be on the leaner, lighter side of things. I know I've been to Easter meals personally where there's a lot of casseroles, there's a lot of ham, there's a lot of, I used to make the little ham sandwiches with the poppy seeds and the cheese and the mustard and all that, they're delicious. But it can also be something where you are tempted to really overeat. So think about um, the most appealing chicken or seafood or um, steak or tofu entree that you could choose from either someone's table or in a, in a restaurant menu. And then I wanna think about Remember plate it. If you're going for lunch, you want half of your plate being vegetables. If it's a dinner, you want three quarters of your plate being vegetables. So think about ordering an extra veggie side, right? So maybe like garlicky green beans or um, something that would substitute some of the starchier things. If they do have mashed potatoes, maybe you wanna go for sweet potatoes. Um, a lot of, there's just so, it's being spring, there's so many amazing vegetables that are available that most restaurants, a lot of farm to table, are gonna be promoting those things that are in season. Okay, so think about that. Let me see about my Passover notes. Did I have anything I'm missing on that? Uh, no, not really. One thing about restaurants that I want you guys to be mindful of is the volume of oil when you're eating out. Eating out can be tricky, and I know, right, like I can't remember the movie. Oh gosh, it'll come to me as soon as I stop this video, but it was like, back in the 80s, maybe early 90s, and it was when they go out to eat, and it was like, I want a half-calf, decaf, and a side of twist of lemon, and like, it was very picky, and people made fun of them for being super picky eaters. You're not being picky if you're being discerning, and you're letting the restaurant know what works for you, okay? So, land the plane, Stephanie. What this means is that when you're ordering an entree, or maybe you're ordering vegetables, most restaurants, hotels in particular, are gonna slather on the butter and the oil because it makes things taste better. Taste is one thing, but you wanna be very careful and you can insist on little oil. Alana shared with us as coaches a tip that she uses when she goes to restaurants. She says, it gives me horrible indigestion. I really need you. I need to insist that you're using just a tiny bit of oil when you're preparing X, Y, and Z. And you know what? People are human, they're gonna respect that. They're not gonna to try to sabotage you. So um, you might ask for steamed veggies or look for a side salad that is very appealing. Do your dressing on the side. Remember the technique of mixing a little bit of dressing with a little bit of water. That's a great way to bring in all that flavor but not add all the extra, all right? Okay, so moving on. We've gone through drinks, we've gone through the appetizers, the main course, let's talk about dessert because it's often a great time to celebrate and talk about things with friends and family. And again, we wanna talk about two concepts when it comes to dessert. Positive mindset. Let's say you're at a family event and you're not getting along with Aunt Sue. Maybe not a great time to have a dessert with Aunt Sue. We wanna be in that positive mindset. Remember, if we're coming at it from a positive mindset, an exploration, we want a couple of tastes or you know, a little mini cupcake, and you're just enjoying it and savoring it and enjoying everything about the moment, awesome. When you step out of that mindset, I want you to drop the fork, okay? Same thing for alcohol. I said this the other day, and I was like, drop the glass. Maybe not drop the glass, but that's not a good time to enjoy that treat, something that's really gonna be special for you in your plan. So if you don't consider this holiday an extra special occasion, then it's not a time to have an extra special treat, right? It doesn't mean because you're at someone's house, you have to have dessert. Again, this is not a deprivation. This is not a D-I-E-T, did I eat that? You can enjoy dessert if you so desire. But at this point, most of us, my dog wants to go out, have eaten more than we probably should have. So I want you to just to be cognizant of that, okay? If you're feeling, what's your, what's your full gauge, right? From empty to overstuffed, we don't wanna be in the overstuffed. We don't wanna leave Easter or Passover feeling just like, oh, gotta go home and take a nap, or I feel sick, or my stomach hurts. We wanna eat just the right amount, okay? Just enough to feel full and satisfied, all right? 
If you want a little bit of dessert and you see something that looks decadent and you haven't tried it or it's a family favorite or it's something that only comes out at this time of the year, have a small piece, enjoy it, savor it. Or have, you know, maybe your husband has a piece of it and you're gonna have a forkful just to taste it or a couple of forks full. That oftentimes, I know for me, they say from research that about three bites is all you need to satisfy all that sensory part of your brain. So why not have two or three bites? Right? Like that's a great way to sample it, not go overboard and not lead you into, for some of us, the more sugar we eat, the more sugar we crave. So if it's a trigger for you, don't just stay away from that. All right, I'm wrapping it up. I'd love to hear your questions. I'd love to hear, first of all, what are you doing this weekend? Is this a special weekend of celebration for you? Do you celebrate Passover or Easter? Of course, there's no shame or guilt if you don't. Um, what are you doing? What, what fun thing do you have planned this weekend? And what's your go-to mental plan? How are you gonna approach it? Did any of this resonate with you? And if so, I'd love to hear what that was. I hope you all have a great day and a great weekend.